Your sense of hearing probably feels like the most important sense you have when it comes to experiencing language. Speech is an auditory phenomenon, but our sense of sight might actually be just as important, because it turns out what we see can affect what we hear. Watch and listen closely. Ba, ba, ba. Was that ba or va? Listen again. Ba, ba, ba. Has something changed? There's actually something weird going on here. Watch the clips side by side. Pay attention to one video at a time. Ba, 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 ba. The sound never changes. So why does it sometimes sound like ba and sometimes sound like va? This illusion is called the McGurk effect. It fools your brain into thinking you're hearing what you're seeing, and it reveals something very interesting about how our minds make sense of a very confusing world. I'm Ryan, and this is Language of Mind. In 1976, Harry McGurk and John McDonald published a paper called Hearing Lips and Seeing Voices. In this paper, they describe a strange auditory visual illusion. When you hear a sound paired with synchronized video of someone's mouth making a different sound, you wind up hearing something entirely new. Their original experiment used an audio recording of someone saying ba and video of someone saying ga. And they found that about 60 to 80% of people exposed to these strange stimuli reported a kind of fused perception. They didn't hear ba or ga. Instead, they heard something like da. Ba, 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 ba. Since the original study, we found even stronger versions of this effect. It's truly a weird phenomenon. What we hear is not just affected by what we see. In some cases, what we see completely rewrites what we hear. I know what you're thinking. Maybe this is all about timing. After all, the speed of light is much, much greater than the speed of sound. Light reaches our eyes slightly before sound reaches our ears. What actually happens in our brain when we see and hear someone talking is a little strange. Our brain actually slows down the visual processing so that we can sync up the sound of their speech with the sight of their lips moving. So our brains are already doing something kind of funky when it comes to integrating sight and sound. But what kind of effect does timing have on the illusion? It turns out you can actually still get McGurked even if the audio and video aren't perfectly simultaneous. The illusion still kicks in even if the audio starts 30 milliseconds before or up to 170 milliseconds after the video. The illusion can occur with timing delays in either direction, but it's much stronger when the video comes first and the audio lags. Maybe that's because our brains are already delaying our vision in an effort to sync it to what we're hearing, so delaying it a little bit more doesn't cause too much trouble. In fact, this is exactly what happens when we listen to someone far away. The farther away someone is, the greater the lag between when we see their mouth move and when we hear them speak. And this corrective process may be exactly why audio lags don't seem to bother us. The fun thing about the McGurk effect is that it's almost totally automatic. It works even if you're aware of it. It still works on me even though I've been teaching about it for years. I get McGurked even when I'm the one in the video that I'm watching. I can McGurk myself. And that's because the effect is occurring at a very deep cognitive level. It's not just something that we can talk about, it's something that we can observe in the brain itself. Our brains generally process vision in the occipital lobe and sound in the auditory cortex. When we get McGurked, the activity in our occipital lobe tends to match the brain activity for the lip movements we're seeing, but the activity in the auditory cortex matches the illusory perception. Our auditory cortex treats the classic McGurk stimulus not as ba or ga, but as da. In fact, our auditory cortex is active whenever we see lips moving, even if there's no sound at all. Our brains are actively trying to reconstruct what we should be hearing using the best information available, our sense of sight. Another brain response generated by the auditory cortex shows that the McGurk effect can fool our brains on a deep level. A 2002 study using EEG found that a series of normal stimuli, followed by a McGurk stimulus, generates a strong auditory surprise response in the brain. In the study, listeners saw and heard a series of ba ba ba, followed by the classic McGurk stimulus, that same ba, but paired with a video of someone saying ga. When the brain encountered this new stimulus, it showed the same pattern of activity as if it had just heard a new sound, even though the sound had not changed. And a 2008 study found an even stronger effect. 
listeners heard a series of va followed either by an unmanipulated ba or a McGurked stimulus. A ba accompanied by video of a person saying va. The normal ba evoked a typical surprise response in the brain, but the McGurk stimulus evoked no brain response at all. Even though the sound had changed from ba to ba, it's as though the brain simply did not notice. And this effect may even be present in the nerves that carry auditory information from the cochlea in our inner ear into the brain. A study in 2015 found different patterns of activity in these nerves when a person was watching silent lip movements than non-speech movements like smiling and frowning. This suggests that even in the nerves coming from the ear, sound is already being encoded from visual information alone, even when no sound is present. So not only do we consciously experience this illusion, but our brain experiences it on a very deep and possibly unconscious level. The effect is very pervasive. It's hard to switch off. All right, I know we're all thinking it. The most burning question about the McGurk effect. Are babies susceptible to the illusion? Can you McGurk a baby? And the answer is yes, you could totally McGurk a baby. Babies can't talk, which is exactly why you might think babies would be immune to the McGurk effect. They don't have a whole lot of experience matching sounds to mouth movements, so I wouldn't expect them to be very good at it. But the fact that they can't talk means we can't just ask them, hey, what did that sound like? Excuse me, are you feeling McGurked? Instead, we have to test them another way. Luckily, we can take advantage of the fact that babies get bored of stuff. And this can tell us a lot about how babies are experiencing the world. In the habituation test paradigm, researchers will subject a baby to some kind of stimulus. A video, a sound, an object, it could be anything. Eventually, the baby will get bored and stop paying attention. And that's something we can measure. The first study investigating the McGurk effect on babies tested five-month-olds by repeatedly playing a video of a person saying va 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 until the baby got bored. Once the baby had enough of seeing va va va, the researchers introduced a new stimulus. When they showed the babies a classic McGurk stimulus, an auditory va with a visual va, the babies weren't interested. As far as they were concerned, they had already seen and heard this. What does that mean? It means that they didn't notice a difference between normal speech and McGurk speech. It means they got McGurked. Another study habituated four and a half month old babies on McGurk stimuli. Then they introduced audio only ba and audio only da. And guess which one babies were more interested in? The babies treated ba as novel and they treated da as boring and familiar. Why? Because they actually heard the McGurk stimuli as da. Even though they were hearing ba earlier and were now hearing da, they didn't notice a difference. They got McGurked! Most of us are very reliant on sight to navigate the world, so it makes sense that visual input can mislead us. But what about people who don't have such a reliance on sight? Is it possible for a blind person to experience the illusion? What we hear is not only affected by vision, it can also be influenced by our sense of touch. Buckle up, because this is one of the most Wild West studies I have ever seen. Carol Fowler and Don Deekle had listeners categorize sounds from a ba-ga continuum. But they introduced a new element. While participants were listening to the sounds, they also had their hand on someone's mouth while it moved in perfect synchrony with the sound. They heard something, but they felt something else. That's right, it's a tactile McGurk. So while they heard ga, their fingers would actually feel a pair of lips. Actually, Carol Fowler's lips. Going through the motions of ba, and this was enough to shift what they thought they were hearing. Just like the earlier studies, the introduction of non-auditory input shifted the probability that a listener would perceive a sound from the continuum as either ba or ga. The effect wasn't as strong as an old-fashioned audiovisual McGurk, but the fact that it worked at all is astonishing. These participants had never done this before. They weren't trained to translate touch into speech. Even though they had no prior experience, they not only correctly recognized the physical lip movements through touch alone, their minds even used that tactile information to change what they thought they were hearing. It's really incredible. We are immersed in an ocean of noise, bombarded by sights and sounds, and our brains are desperately trying to make sense of it all. We use every kind of information we have access to in order to piece together what we're experiencing. That's what the McGurk effect is. Our brains using every available piece of information in order to try and understand what's happening in the world around us. A good ventriloquist can make you believe the sound of their voice is coming from their dummy. It works because what you're hearing doesn't quite match what you're seeing. You're hearing the ventriloquist's voice, but you're not seeing their mouth move. 
Instead, you're seeing their dummy's mouth flap up and down, perfectly matching the words you're hearing. And that's enough to fool your brain. This shows just how strong the cognitive mechanisms underlying the McGurk effect really are. We can be convinced that we're hearing sounds that match sight or touch of a person's lips, or we can believe that a human voice can come from a lifeless dummy. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I actually made this video because someone in the comments said they'd like to hear about auditory perception, so leave me a comment and let me know what you're interested in. Also, are you immune to the McGurk effect? Or do you hear weird stuff when you see this video? Let me know in the comments. Take it easy.